Hello there, Michelle Short here for My Favourite Things. Today I have a card to share with you using the Slumbering Sloth set, creating a very simple night sky. So to start off with, I'm taping down a panel of white cardstock. This is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm placing the rectangle extraordinaire stencil on top. I want to mask off the edges and these stencils are really great to be able to do that. So I'm using some memo tape here I do use a lot of it but I do reuse it multiple times so I'm taking some distress inks for the background and first of all I'm using peacock feathers generally when I do ink blending I start off with the darkest color or if I'm ink blending a panel I would start at the top and work my way down but I do really want to map out where this lightest colour is going to be. So I just want to add that at the bottom. I'm using blending brushes today. I find them really helpful to be able to blend onto white cardstock. Next, I'm taking the chipped sapphire and off screen I kind of added that onto the brush sometimes if you do it right over your project I find with brushes sometimes if the ink pad is really juicy it does kind of flick some of the color onto the panel so I'm just trying to be careful there not to do that so I'm adding the chip sapphire right at the top I am going to add another color over the top again so I'm not being too kind of precise with the ink blending I kind of just want to get the first layer of color down and then I do go back over it multiple times with more layers so I'm going to take the seedless preserves color now it's a really pretty purple shade and I want to add that up at the top of the panel where I want it to be the darkest and this is going to add more of a purple hue to the sky I do lose some of it in the end because I add some of the chip sapphire back over the top but I still think it adds an extra kind of darkness and a very pretty colour so like I said I'm going back over with the chip sapphire now and it tends to make the purple more of a blue toned purple rather than kind of like the red toned purple which is what seedless preserves is I suppose so going in with that chip sapphire and I'm just adding quite a lot here again working in multiple layers going back in with the peacock feathers at the bottom kind of blending that up a little bit further and then I go back in with the chip sapphire again I do find with ink blending it just takes quite a long time to get those layers in my ink pads are a little bit dry as well so I could do with re-inking them so just going in again, just kind of blending that all together. And then once I'm relatively happy with the blend, I'm going to add that into my splat box. I've taken a piece of kind of non-stick craft sheet and I'm adding some white gouache to that and then just diluting that with a tiny little bit of water. I want to add some stars into the sky, but quite often with splatter I find that it tends to look like snow if you add too much. So I'm not adding too much water to this so that the stars remain quite small in size and I'm adding that onto the brush as you can see and then kind of flicking the brush with my finger just to let all of that gouache onto the panel I'm trying to concentrate most of the stars towards the top of the sky and then I can remove that piece and then I can wash that stencil and I'm just going to let that panel sit to dry while I work on the colouring. So I have stamped out this cute, absolutely adorable sloth here and the stars from the Slumbering Sloth set. And I'm going to colour that with Copic markers. All of the colours that I'm using are listed on the screen here. So I'm using some E40 shades for the sloth. So I went in with the darkest shades first, the E49, E47, E44 and E43. And then I'm going in here with the E43, the E42 and the E41 just to blend that out so that that part of his face is a little bit lighter. And then E47 for the nose. And then going back in with those same shades, the E44, the E43 and the E41 for the hands and his little belly there. I really love sloths, I just think they're so, so cute. And then I can colour the branch of the tree there with the E59, E57 and E55. 
just adding the darkest colour towards the bottom kind of like if there was a moon above I suppose and then for the little leaves I'm using G29, YG17, YG25 and YG01 and then for his adorable little pyjamas we in the UK here we call them pyjamas I'm assuming that elsewhere in the world they are called pyjamas as well or PJs but if they're called something different where you live, I would love to hear what they're called. <laughs> I'm always fascinated by things that are called, you know, like different things are called different things in um, different countries. So I'm using some Aquatones for his pyjamas. I used the BG75 just to give it kind of an extra sort of shadow darkness. And then I've gone in with the BG49, the BG15, and this here is the BG13. And then I'm going in with my lightest shade, which is the BG11. And it is quite dry. So at this point, I turned off the camera and I did refill it so that I could blend this out properly. So just blending all of those shades together and then I do go back in with the two lightest shades the BG13 and the BG11 again just to blend that all out. I did get a little bit of aqua onto his face there so just pushing that back with some of the lighter shades. And then for the stars I'm using YR24, Y17, Y15 and Y11 just trying to have kind of the darkest shade onto the right hand side of the stars and when I put them on the card I'm going to try and have them in that orientation so just making sure that that's all blended nicely and then I can use the coordinating dynamics to cut that out so just placing that over the image and then I can hold it in place with some low tack tape And then just taking those stars as well. I did make sure to move them around a few times, the stars, just to make sure that they are going to cut out really nicely. And then I ran that through my die cutting machine and I'm just taking the images out here. I did initially think that the sloth didn't cut properly. My cutting plates on my die cutting machine need replacing. So I initially thought it didn't cut properly, but it actually did. I just had to push it a little bit more. I'm just removing that piece there. Next, I'm going to take the sentiment from the set and I'm going to stamp that onto some black cardstock. This is black licorice cardstock. And I'm going to stamp that down with Versamark ink to emboss it. So I'm using an anti static powder tool, just getting rid of any of the excess powder. And then I can ink up my stamp here with Versamark ink. Just making sure to cover that sentiment really nicely with the ink and then stamp that down. And then I can apply some white embossing powder. And I tend to apply it, tap off the excess and then apply it a couple of times just to get a really nice coverage. And then I can heat set that until it's completely melted. And I like to heat set from the front and the back. It just helps to prevent warping of the cardstock and to make sure that you don't overheat the embossing powder. And then I can cut that down into a strip. I have taken my panel here and I'm just going to add some adhesive onto the back of that and add that onto an A2 sized white card base. I did add some scrap paper underneath just to make sure that in case the ink splatter hadn't dried that I wouldn't kind of smudge it but in the end it was dry so that was okay. Next I'm taking all of the images here and just placing them down onto the card. Just want to make sure of the placement before I stick them down. So just adding those stars in, just making sure that I'm going to adhere them where I want them to be. 
and then I have added some foam tape onto the back of the sloth and the sentiment piece already and so I can just take that image here this adorable sloth remove the backings off of the foam tape and then I can place that down onto the card and I want to place it so that the top part of the branch is just slightly overhanging the ink blending I want it to look like the scene kind of goes further beyond the actual kind of ink blending if that makes sense and then I've just added that sentiment there at the bottom and then I can take some on point precision glue and just add that onto the back of the stars so I'm going to place them down flat and I like that some of the pieces are flat like the stars and then the sloth and the sentiment are raised up so I can just place that last star down at the bottom there and that's the card finished for today. I just adore those adorable sloths and I think these sloths are perfect to send to a friend. Links to the products that I used will be in the description bar here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.